Hey everyone, it's Christopher Swan, and welcome to this week's episode of Living Your Journey. Each week, I have this amazing opportunity to chat with people that love what they do in life. They understand their passions and their direction. Maybe it's a career path or the social impact that they're making. It's kind of like they're following their North Star, but they know their story may change, and they understand that they're on a journey every day. This week, Jared Wright is on the show. Jared is all things creative. He's a filmmaker, part of the electro dance pop band Tiny Pyramids, an actor, and even owns a video production company telling stories through film for others. I think of Jared's story as a great example of someone who finds a way to do what he loves. With his kind of work, he'd be well suited for a city like Los Angeles, but he's in a community in Northern California, yet being as creative as anyone in LA and still making it work. In our chat, we get into the why and the how of his filmmaking, a deep dive into his band, and how he's integrating his day job with his expanding creative outlets. Jared also shares insight into being creative in a small community, networking, and a lot more. This is a good listen for anyone wanting to follow their creative passions, no matter your circumstances. Everyone, meet Jared. Jared, it's great to have you here today. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. So I've been excited to chat today because I've been really curious about your story and really all this creativity that I think you are not only putting out there, but just, I don't know, diving into. So here's what I don't think you do know. The funny thing about me stumbling onto you I was actually researching a local videographer um, for maybe a project I was going to have done. And then I came up on some of your work and I was like, wait, who is this guy? And it was like the rabbit hole of the Internet, you know, where you're like, click on this and click on that. And so that's how I found you. And I like have been like cyber stalking your music and the video films that you've been doing. So that's the real truth of why like, I'm so excited about your creativity. Uh, yeah, thank you. I I saw that you had posted something, a clip from our um, a Tiny Pyramids music video, and uh, that was my first, um, uh, you know, exposure to to who you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you saw that. Um, I've been following along for a while. So let me let me start this conversation really by saying um, I, I'm going to think about this as when I first like kind of experienced what you were doing. So I think kind of from an outsider you practically seem like all things creative because there's, you know, f- uh, filmmaking, you're in a band, um, there's some photography mixed in there, there's acting at live theater. But when I started to think about this, I kind of suspect that you're really kind of a storyteller. And so I'd love to ask out of all that creative work, and we'll dive into pieces of that, like what speaks to you the most? Um, they all do really. Um, I would say that filmmaking is probably the one that I'm most passionate about. Uh, but they all speak to me, um, in, in various different ways and they're all extremely rewarding to me. Um, and I, and I love them all dearly. And what's the, what's the why behind all of that? What's the why of filmmaking, music, photography, and maybe there's different whys to that. And, and what I mean by that is like, like, why are you driven to, to be creative in that way? Like, you know, that versus being a dentist. I mean, what's the, what's the connection? I guess, like you said, to, to tell stories and, but also to, I, I, I'm attracted to, to stories and to the idea of like, making people feel something or, or at least, or at least trying to. Um, I think that I, as a viewer and an audience member myself, um, there's nothing better for me than when I see some form of art, some, some work that just moves me so much or, or, or challenges my perception or, you know, just does something to me. And so that to be able to do that or try to do that is the highest honor. It's, it's, something that I just feel like I have to do. 
And I love that from a audience perspective, because that's, I, th- I think that's a little bit of, and you don't know this, but I'm really kind of obsessed with the arts and entertainment in that way, because I, there's this emotion to it. It's not just visual candy, which it can be sometimes, but it's this connection I can make, right? Sure. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think a lot of people help people, you know, like a dentist or a nurse or a doctor or, or a therapist. And those are all amazing, incredible ways to help people. But I really feel like I get the most help both like with my emotional state and my mental state from art. And so that's why I'm drawn to it. Yeah, that's a great way to say it. That's, that's how I have always felt as well. Does on the flip side of, of art, because it's, it's interesting that you talk about like, you know, it's almost where we could say like, you're creating this for others. Of course, you need an audience to see it. But is there the other side of it, too, where this is also about expression? It makes me think about like um, painters, especially in that medium, you know, that they're really doing this kind of they need to do it, not just to show others, but they have to get this thing out, this message. Does is that part of your formula as well or kind of your desire? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I don't think many people have seen what I do anyway. So it's uh, it's definitely um, for me uh, as well. I I think that's where you always start anyway. Um, I definitely always start from somewhere within some kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it can be very cathartic for sure. And um, yeah, and it's, it, it, you know, typically my, my music and my stories come from whatever pain I'm hap- happen, you know, happen to be going through at the time or, or, you know, something, something of the like. So um, yeah, it's absolutely for me. And then you hope that someone else can get something out of it as well. I think that speaks like it makes it more valid. It's more, I don't know, valid's not the right word. It's more authentic when it comes from like, like if, if it's pain or joy or whatever it is, but if it comes truly from you. Right. Has it always been that way for you, even when you were in school? And because I, you know, I, and I, if I don't have this right, correct me, but I think you end up at Sonoma State switching um, majors to, into film. And uh, just thinking about that, like even in that discovery, did you, did it come to you and say, yeah, I just need to express this or it was just, you were captured by everything that you saw. Yeah, that's, wow. You, you did some research. I, I didn't know you found that information. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, I have your address. No, <laughs> you, you, have, you, have, you have your, your, your ways. Yeah, um, I do. Yeah. So I, yeah, I transferred to, to, um, SSU and I was an English major actually. And, um, yeah, I, I switch. You know, as soon as I found out that they had a film program through the art history department, I switched. And, you know, I thought about, I really thought about studying film production, of course. And I, I sat down with the advisor at SSU, and he said, "Hey, you know," he kind of put it like this. He's like, "Anyone can teach you how to, you know, operate a camera if that's really what you want." But, uh, but you know, this is about telling stories. This is about understanding how to watch film and how wh- the way film works, um, what, what filmmakers actually do, uh, you know, in terms of, um, telling a story to an audience and that he kind of sold me that kind of fascinated me. And, and he was right because I eventually ended up getting a job at the company that I now own. And, uh, and they taught me everything I needed to know about, you know, the, the technical aspect of filmmaking, if, if you will. That's a perfect segue because uh, I had that on my list too about about um, video break media. Yeah, because I really wanted to connect into the into the why of that because that's I think you guys are really focused on um, video production. I mean, you do storytelling, but you you make films for others. Is that is that right? Do I have it straight? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's 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 sort of two sides to that to that business, and um, yeah, a lot of it is is just whatever a company may want, um, you know, a 60 second spot, um, or, um, like one that I, we're finishing up currently, uh, which is more of kind of like a mini documentary. So it just really depends on, yeah, on what they want. With you working there and then ended up purchasing it too, how does this fit into kind of your world of you know storytelling this filmmaking in your creative side because it's it's really different when 
you own this company and you're creating stories for others, you know, for a yeah. brand or whatever. But so yeah. for for your, I guess, mm, career or direction, how do you keep those worlds together? Well, they, they were they were separate for a long time. And that was just uh, how it existed. And and that was fine. Um, in fact, that's what's starting to happen now. You know, you're, you're catching me at a time where it's the, the two worlds have finally started to meet and I'm, I'm actually, it's in flux. I'm in the process of figuring out how that is going to work and how that can happen because, you know, I make money on the, um, you know, the clientele work, the, the work that I, like you said, you know, people hire me to tell their story or, or tell their, you know, that's how I live. But, you know, I don't make any money off my projects, but my projects, of course, are the ones that are coming, you know, from the place within that we just talked about, you know, the, the ones that I really want to do the, you know, they call them passion projects or whatever. Um, you know, those are the ones that are, you know, where I really want to be. So this is sort of a, um, a new, a new area of trying to, you know, sort of combine the two, uh, and figure out, I don't know what that looks like yet. I have to figure out what that, what that's going to be, but it's, it's starting. It's, it's finally overlapping. When I was a, when I was just an employee there, um, you know, I, I stayed there for so long because they let me do my, my projects on the side and use, you know, have access to all of their resources. And so that was so attractive. And, and I got to, yeah, I got to work, you know, in my own time on, on pretty much whatever I wanted. And then when we were working, we were working. So, um, and now I don't have anyone telling me what to do. So it's, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring it out. <laughs> I think that's a, it's an interesting space you're in. I mean, they obviously relate. I say interesting too, because I don't think this is really foreign for anybody, you know, like how do you mold yeah. or, or merge in that, that passion? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Uh, well, I'll be curious to see where that goes because I could almost see because I th I think of you when I I see all your passion projects, if you will. It's you know it's almost funny that we even call it that because <laughs> like that makes it sound like that's what I do on the side that I just like it's a hobby, right? But I would almost and I don't even know you. I just know what I find online. But it's like I think of you as. The, that's who you are and like the video bright media is like it's the it, it it's not the if you had a choice you had to pick them all uh you know and say oh i want to do this for a living with like making all this artistic stuff obviously it's not paying the bills but so i could i'm just really curious to see how you pull that together too because i think everybody in the world probably has some sort of push and pull where, yeah. they, where do they do it well i yeah no it's it's really feels good to hear you say that because I, I think that you're, that's how I feel as well. Um, I, I think that I, you know, I don't want, yeah, my, my identity sort of as a, as a creator or, or an artist or whatever, um, is, yeah, is hopefully that of the work that you've probably seen and, and hopefully it's, you know, spoken to you in some way or, or, or whatever. And, and yeah, and the stuff I do for money is, is, um, you know, a bit more business oriented, drier subject matter, so to speak. But it's, you know, it's, it's like you said, it's telling someone else's story. It's important to, to a company, to a client, to them. But yeah, that's not, I, I definitely am not defined by that. I hope. Um, yeah, I do hate the, the, the term passion, pro <laughs> passion projects because yeah, it does suggest that, that somehow it's, it's less than it's just your little personal thing, which is at all because really those are i think you're spot on those are the actual those are what that's who that person really is whatever their passion project is is actually who they are like most of the time i think the what we do for money sometimes is, is not at all who we are but i i you know i I'm, i consider myself lucky because a lot of people don't get to even start merging the two like i'm beginning to um i was very fortunate to 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 be able to have that business and and um and, and sort of be my own boss and, and, uh, you know, be able to have this, these two worlds, uh, colliding, um, hopefully in a, in a good way. Are there some examples you can talk about that you are starting to merge them? And the reason I ask this, because I think of one of them, but I don't know if this is really true. You, in some of these projects that you do f under your company, you, um, you've also made music videos for other artists. 
Yes. And and so that almost makes me think a little bit like, well, that is that part of kind of what the merger might look like where you're you're being artistic but you're you're not just doing it for a corporation. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, the the music videos have been um absolutely that where it's it's more creative, it's it's a lot more fun. Uh yeah, you're still doing it for someone else, you're still telling someone else's story for the most part, but yeah, we're getting to um you know, get creative and and have a lot of fun with it. That's probably good, even just knowledge for anybody else that's listening. Like there is a way like and that's where I was trying to go with that. You know, like there is a way to merge stuff. It doesn't have to be completely polar opposite if you don't want it to be. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of music, let's I I want to talk about music for a little bit, too, since we've can bounce it around a little bit and we'll we'll come back to some of your film. But so you're in a band, Tiny Pyramids. And that's where I kind of, you know, dived in quite a bit. And I was like, wait, what? You guys have this EP and I've listened to it and I've I've obviously shared it in places. So I'd love to know a little bit of the story. Like, how did Tiny Pyramid start? Um, What's the what's the core of it? Who is it? Sure. It's uh, myself and uh, a woman named Delia Bowen. And we are sort of the core members uh when we play live which we we haven't for a while we've been taking a break from the stage but um when we play live we're actually a full uh five piece band um which is nice and we we sort of have a core group um although the drummer keeps kind of changing but uh uh but yeah but it's it's mostly the two of us and it started um i guess about 3 3 or 4 years ago uh you know, I, when I was really young, I, um, you know, I was, I tried to do band in, in, in grade school, elementary school. And I, I, you know, I wanted, I wasn't, I wanted to do the saxophone because that was the, the instrument at the time. And that's, I was so funny. Um, yeah, Jared, I, I, I used to play the sax. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, I was a kid and it was like the late eighties, early nineties and everybody wanted to play the saxophone. <laughs> and, um, I couldn't make that thing make a sound. So, uh, and I didn't want to play any other instrument, so I I, I joined the jazz choir instead. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and so yeah, but I've been doing music. You know, I did music way before I ever did film or anything like that. And um, I was I was in love with hip hop, like as a as a child, as a kid, as a as a young kid. And <clears throat> excuse me, I um I grew up listening to hip hop records like all the time, and even had like you know a couple really bad hip hop bands. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. And, and then I, and then I, then I found filmmaking, at, you know, like right out of high school sort of. And, and, uh, and I sort of stopped doing music and I, I just started trying to make films uh, all the time. And, but eventually music, I mean, music was always something that I was passionate about and I was always listening to it and talking about it and writing about it and reading about it. And, uh, but eventually I, I, I got like sad. I, I, you know, I knew I had to do music again and I didn't know how, and I didn't know when. And, uh, eventually I just said, okay, I'm, you know, I'm just going to do it. I just got some software. I bought myself a little laptop and, uh, you know, synthesizer and just started, you know, I knew I, at the time I was a DJ actually here around Santa Rosa and, and I was playing a lot of like, electro pop, like a lot of stuff that I was really getting into at the time. So, which, which has a lot of, you know, kind of, uh, hip hop elements in the beats and stuff. And, and I, yeah, it, it just sort of, uh, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to give that a shot. And, uh, and I started making some things that I didn't, that I thought didn't totally suck. And, uh, so I showed it to, originally I had a different singer. I showed it to, uh, through a friend I met, I knew I wanted a female vocal element. I thought to myself, that would be great to have a male female vocal to do like harmonies unisons uh duets um and uh so i sang with a girl but we never got on stage for about a year and then she moved away and um delia was sort of in the same social circle and she had heard these early demo recordings of ours and she was like oh my god i'm in love with your sound like i danced to it in my bedroom and which was like the highest compliment to me is if someone's dancing to my song in their bedroom, that's, that's awesome. Um, and so, yeah, so it was like perfect timing. I said, well, do you want to be in the band? <laughs> do you want to be in the project? And she was like, yeah. And I think about a year later we were on stage just like killing it all over Sonoma County. And uh, like we played, we only played once in the city, but, but all over Sonoma County. Um, and yeah, 
so that's sort of how it came to be. Yeah, I, I saw actually some some of the pictures, and I even think I saw um, a photo from the the city uh, performance that you guys did. Like I said, I've <laughs> researched you guys a lot. I was like, because here's the thing, Jared. I mean, not only did I think your music was great, but <laughs> I was like, they're in Sonoma County, <laughs> really? <laughs> like it just because like this electro pop, like I just do not think of that from this area, from the middle of the wine country. Yeah, we, it was kind of a curse and a blessing, I guess, because we were we were sort of a hit because no one sounded like us in this area. But it was also like we couldn't we, we it was hard. Like the the gigs were were weird because it was we didn't really sound like anyone else. So like playing with other bands was was odd sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, it was always fun. So uh, was it just that influence that you were listening to when you were like doing the DJ that got you into the electro pop to like form a band around that sound? Like, was it, it wasn't just like a, ah, this just feels good right now, but it was just, you really grooving into it. Yeah. I mean, I've always liked eighties synth pop and that's a huge, huge influence on tiny pyramids. And yeah, when I started DJing, I mean, I discovered bands, you know, I, I, you know, I discovered bands like cut copy and the presets and LCD sound system. And, and, and I was like, Oh my God, like this is, this, this stuff is incredible to me. Um, and, and yet I was still like listening to talking heads and tears for fears and all that, st- you know, yeah. and it was just like, this is what I want to do. I want to put, you know, and I like, like Chromio as well was one that like, I was like, Oh my God, they, they're bringing it back. You know, they're, they're, their, uh, when I first heard Chromio, you know, their, their first record, which was, you know, kind of like really saying, okay, Hey, eighties is back 100%. Um, it's, and it's fresh and it's, you can do it any way you want to do it. And I was, yeah, I fell in love. So you guys, I think released your EP was just this last year in 2016. Is that right? Um, I think maybe if it, it was early to that, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Or it might have been the end of 2015 or, or the beginning of 2016. But yeah, it was might have been the end of 2015. I have to look it up. Okay. And that was, and if I'm not mistaken, that was your first like um, group. That's not only. Yeah. Okay. But I also know that you guys are working on some new music as well. So that makes me just wonder like, um, what's next for Tiny Pyramids? Or what's next for that project for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, recording right now. Um, we yeah, we're, we're not looking to get back on the stage quite yet. Uh, at least not until, yeah, we, we, we have a lot of new material written and, and we're, we're almost ready to start recording it. Some of it we have started recording, but, um, I think once we get that probably recorded and, and down, uh, maybe, maybe not released necessarily. Um, but if it happens to be at the same time, that's great too, but we'll probably be ready for the stage. Um, once that that that's a, like a new EP is sort of ready. Yeah, let me just I just thought about this too, where, you know, you've started all these different things, right? I mean, you purchase this company, you're making these films. And I say start because like, you know, sure, maybe you know the technical parts and you went to school, but you had to say, gosh, I'm I'm going to create a new short film. I'm going to do a project. Same with this band. I'm going to start this. I'm going to do this. You're also not in the mecca of of music or film i mean you're it's not like you're in the middle of nowhere but you're not in the middle of los angeles you're not in the middle of these spaces what's that been like for you to even just say hey i'm going to start this thing i'm just going to figure it out like i know what what i know like has there been i guess what's that journey been like for you just to start these kind of projects and see them come to life yeah um it's been it's been awesome and horrible (laughs) <laughs> that's super honest. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's been, it's been awesome in the sense of, I feel, I often feel inspired. I often feel encouraged. I often feel, um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I don't feel so disheartened or I don't feel like I'm competing so much. Um, but it's been horrible in the sense of, yeah, it, it, you know, it's, it's sort of, I mean, I'm in the North Bay. Yeah. You got San Francisco right there, which is, which is all right. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, as I'm sure, you know, um, and I'm learning more and more is it's no matter if it's music, film, art, whatever. I mean, it really like contacts and who, you know, can be everything. So, you know, when you, when you can, when you can make contacts, I mean, 
oftentimes that really, really helps you. Um, but, but sometimes I feel, you know, cause I, I do visit Los Angeles and have lots of friends there. And, uh, but sometimes when I'm down there, I, I, I really start to feel discouraged. It's so competitive and it's so, it's, you know, it's just so overwhelming. And up here, I think I can breathe a little better. Mm, that kind of, I didn't think of it, but the, the last part of it, but that's actually really true. You, you do have breathing room where you can do things a little bit differently without feeling like the competition is always around you. Exactly. I wonder too, if, um, just because the day and age that we live in with connectivity, you know, with, um, technology, internet, things of this sort, does that also help you kind of, I would imagine that that only benefits you more because it also helps you be where you want to be, but still reach target audiences or audiences in completely different spaces. Yeah. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I wish more so, but, uh, it, the, but the, uh, the technology is there that the opportunity is there. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, that makes me think of, uh, you know, back, you know, just not that long ago about bands that were getting, you know, sort of, internet famous or whatever, you know, um, there were, you know, there were quite a few bands that were, would just release something online and I'm, I'm sure it's still happening and they would just blow up because of, you know, one track or one, one EP or one album. And that's, that's so fascinating and so awesome that that can happen. Um, you know, so that, that's, that's really, that's really amazing. Well, I want to go back to the, the thing that you said too, about the, um, you know, the contacts and, and who, you know, like that really does help. It makes me think a little bit about um, when you're, especially when you're not in a non-creative career. Uh, I mean, everything is a little creative, but I'm going to stereotype um, just to make it easier. Like, let's say I'm an accountant or I'm something in this sort of, or I'm, I'm in marketing and somehow I'm in these kind of standardy sort of roles. People really connect in like-minded roles. They go to conferences, they do these things to meet the individuals, to grow their connections. But as a creative, do you purposely seek out those like-minded people, you know, for that contact or to be collaborative together? Or is that just kind of by chance because creative people like just kind of find each other? I think it's a bit of both. I think that the latter is absolutely true. Um, you just kind of, you know, identify with people and you, and you sort of understand people, some people, other people. Um, but then, yeah, sometimes I think that you go, you know, um, you know, you go to like, for instance, uh, um, I've been to Sundance like three times with some director friends and, uh, you know, you, you, you go there, um, wanting to, to make connections and meet people and, and, and make contacts and it, and it really does help you. Um, but, but then often, often, yeah, it's just, you're sort of drawn together by this, like, (laughs) you know, invisible force anyway. Well, you know, I say that too, because uh, it's, it's really different than that's why I talk about this creative piece. I think that usually creatives are fans of creative. So, you know, it's, uh, it's easy to be like, I just, I would love their work. And, and this is my, my, why I was going with this question is if you're going to send dance, for example, like, are you, you know, you want to see some of the work, but you want to make some contacts. Are you searching for specific people I don't mean individuals, but areas of expertise like, oh, I, I need to I really want to meet somebody who does this kind of production work because that would really help me or I need somebody to work on a project for me. Like what does that connections look like that you're looking for when you do that? Yeah, that's that's an interesting question because I I think I don't actually go with like specific ideas with with actual, you know, like I need a, a you know, a production designer or, or a sound you know designer. Um, I think it's more just general, you know, general sort of, um, camaraderie, you know, general, uh, community and, and, and trying to, to make, to make real connections to see who, who maybe you, you gel with, so to speak. Okay. You know, and I was asking a little bit, I mean, I was asking for a couple of reasons there, there, I was, I really was just curious, but I thought, gosh, you know, anybody who's trying to step in into creative or they're, you know, maybe they they're going to take that passion project and be like, "Mm, that's going to be my full time thing. Like, how do you even go forward with that? Because I've lived on the other side. I've lived on the very corporate side and I've been to a zillion conferences and I know what that looks like. And so it would be hard for me to even, if I was said, Oh, I I'm going to be filmmaker now. I don't even know where to start. And 
that's why I think maybe people listening might even think it as well. Well, that makes me think of, uh, I met this gentleman who is a local guy. I forget his name right now, but, um, he, apparently this is a story he told me, um, to my face. He said, uh, that a friend, he and a friend, or maybe a couple friends went to Sundance one year and just as, just as, you know, festival goers and, and they, and the whole time, apparently they said, we have a film coming here next year. And they would just tell everybody, they told everybody, we have a film coming here next year. We have a film coming here next year. Everyone they met and people were into it. Oh, great, great. Uh, be sure to keep us updated and, and tell us the title and we'll look for it and, and et cetera. And um, so they went home and they made a film and they, and it was in Sundance the next year. And th- these people were not filmmakers, <laughs> at least not at that time. And, and it just, I was, I was like dumbfounded by this story. I was like, awestruck i was like how, how did you and he's and i mean it, it was um, like his, the way he described it was almost like they just willed it to be so <laughs> <laughs> if only and 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 they and they actually sold it for like i think he's currently still living on it we're talking this was like in 97 i think wow. uh, and i think he's still living on it they sold it for like you know i don't know like five million dollars or something like that to miramax bought it and it was like and they even got william h macy to be in it and it was you know it was, it's an insane story. And, and, uh, it was, I was, I was fascinated by that. I wanted more details, but he was pretty vague. Does, does that kind of stuff inspire you to also just like keep going, you know, like maybe it it's not going to happen overnight like that for you. I don't know. Maybe it will, but yeah. Th- yeah. Does it like give you inspiration to be like, yeah, well if they can do it. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's very inspiring. It's, it's, um, you know, I don't think that obviously happens for everyone, but, uh, but yeah, that's a, it's definitely inspirational. Do you look to um, stand out with the things that you do? And I mean, are you purposely looking to have a, speci- a very specific style to stand out versus I'm going to do what I love? Like, because the world is so crowded with filmmakers, musicians, that sort of stuff. Like, how do you kind of balance the do what I love and I need to carve out room in this hectic, busy world. It's true. Yeah. Um, it's, it's crazy out there. And yeah, especially with like connectivity you were talking about before, or just the amount of social media that we have available to us, you can just see everything. And, um, and there's, there's a lot of garbage out there, but there's also so much good stuff out there. And I, I don't know if I'm, I mean, I definitely feel like I have, a style, um, or at least, a, um, I have sort of, I, ha- I definitely have sort of like narrative themes or, or I should say like story themes, uh, and also sort of, um, like a sort of a visual, visual themes that I am attracted to and that I, that I try to create with, with some consistency or some, you know, repetition, um, but, uh, but I, I think that it, it's still going back earlier, it still has to come from me and my experiences. And so that, I think if you're true to that, then you, you, you suddenly will have a style, whether you probably realize it or not. It's probably really smart too, is like, to your point, I just keep, keep back you know go back to what's really important to you and it will just come out. Cause I think if you do maybe even try to create a style without being true to yourself, people might see through it. Yeah, I I think so. Um, I think what I like the biggest thing I have trouble with in life is, is something that everybody does, which everybody can relate to is, is love and relationships. And so the, all of my music, every single song is about, you know, relationships and all of my filmmaking pretty much is about relationships and it's about and that's not that that's anything new i mean there's there's nothing new about that but i think that it as long as it comes from a real place and it has sort of a, like I, I think there's a style that i give to it um then then i you know i think that that is is something that i can that i can hopefully be proud of what gets in your way like for to be creative or for your voice, you know, like what kind of holds you back from, and this could be within your filmmaking, your music, or even just you know, acting that we haven't talked about in live theater. Self-doubt 
can get in my way. Um, I'm sure it gets in everybody's way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes resources, uh, although that's becoming less and less of a hurdle. Um, or, you know, um, I think if I can talk about filmmaking specifically, I have one, which is, um, you know, putting, putting together, like working in a group is, you know, can sometimes be challenging, can sometimes be difficult. It's when you're trying to make something that you cannot as an artist make on your own, you have to be, you have to be extremely good at showing everyone your vision, relaying, relaying what you are seeing in your mind. Um, you know, being able to put that into words and, and tell people so that they can, you know, help you, uh, that, that, that can be difficult. It's challenging sometimes. Um, sometimes I wish I just, you know, wrote short stories or something, um, which, which I have tried a few times, uh, cause I, I, I typically write my own scripts, but, um, but yeah, there's some, you know, a painter, uh, I mean, and a, and a, and a writer, obviously they do have people who view their stuff and they have editors and so forth. But, um, but there's something that's, that's kind of why I like composing music too, because I actually, so the tiny pyramid stuff, like I, I write all of that myself and then I get the band to play it. I, I bring it in and I actually kind of perform it to, for them, like in the studio <laughs> or in the rehearsal space. And, uh, or like with Delia, like I will sing the parts to Delia that I want her to sing <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and she'll say, I love it. Okay. That's great. And she'll do it, you know, she'll do it way better than I did, of course. Um, but, uh, but I, I love composing that way because I, I sort of have, you know, total control over that. Not that I'm like a, don't like input. I, I absolutely do. But, um, sometimes I, I'm jealous of people who can, you know, only have to rely on themselves. I completely understand everything you just said. <laughs> like, <laughs> when you have this vision and you have to rely on other people to pull it together with you, it's scary to think like, oh, this may not turn out the way I was really hoping. And great input would be good sometimes as well. But sometimes you also really want to be true to your vision. Yeah. And I think I think when you think about a film director, you think about acting and you think about the visual, but you don't really think about, you know what, this guy had to like tell, you know, 200 people <laughs> or more. Um you know, when you see a really good film, I mean, that's, that's an amazing director and, and producer really team, uh, because they had to tell hundreds of people, this is what this movie, sh you know, needs to sort of feel like needs to sort of look like. I mean, I doubt that anyone is probably ever like, you know, that's exactly what I was thinking, but you know, <laughs> you, if you get close and, and, and then, and then you have happy accidents, you know, <clears throat> that, um, sometimes you get better stuff because you collaborate. So, yeah, absolutely. I've seen that as well. Yeah. And things you, like you, how's the saying going? You don't know what you don't know. Sometimes something can surprise you. Thinking about style and back to kind of a little bit of that, I'm just curious about as you start to progress and do, you know, your creative work, is there anybody out there that you look into or look up to kind of, this could be filmmaking, music or whatever, and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be somebody in the creative arts. I'm just curious about like kind of who influences some of the stuff that you do or what you want to become. I, I, there's so many, I have so many influences. Um, I mean, everything from local filmmakers that I know who are friends of mine to, and, and musicians for that matter. Uh, yeah. To, to, to some that are maybe avant-garde, but make beautiful work to even household names, you know, uh, and, and, you know, and everything in between. Um, is that important for you then? You can I try to like just absorb it, take it in, um, see how it flows. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I watch and read everything constantly. I'm, I'm always, I'm always researching music and film and, you know, I, I, I probably go to the theater once a week, um, at least, uh, just to, you know, and, and that's on top of everything that I watch, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on my computer or at home. Um, yeah, no, I'm, and, and, you know, music is always playing um, sure. at my house or in my car. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly taking everything in. You know, I asked that question too, because, and I know it may sound simple to people, but I've actually chatted with some other creatives who do it opposite. And there's a musician I've talked to and he has said, oh yeah, I really try not to listen to music in this space because I don't want to be influenced by 
kind of um, influenced enough where I'm kind of following a pattern. I want to I want to try to keep it original. And sometimes he found personally that if he he did that, then he found himself gravitating towards somebody else's style. I thought it was really interesting that it, um, it can be really different for each individual. Yeah, no, I love that. I I wish I could be like that. I, I really do. I think um, not as extreme as like outsider art, but I, I love that. Yeah, like I don't even know who that person is and I, I envy them. I really do. <laughs> well, no, you know, I, it's actually a musician kind of in your space. Um, it's um, the um, band is called Color Theory. I don't know if you're familiar mm-hmm. with them. No. Oh, I, I will definitely point you to him. Um, he's actually one of our guests, one of our earlier guests, and he's synth pop, um, self, um, self-published self synth pop uh, musician as well and down in Southern California. Awesome. A little awesome. bit different style. Think of like early 80s Depeche Mode. That kind yeah. of fits that world. A little darker. Uh, yeah, yeah. And he actually, his voice sounds very similar. And I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> funny. Huh. Yeah. No, I, 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 that is so attractive to me to just, yeah, just unplug, you know, not be influenced by things and, and make your art. And because I really do think that that, you know, there's, there's gotta be some amazing stuff that can come from that and that is going to come from that. And and it's going to be so true to who the artist is. Um, but I, you know, we, we, we talked a little bit about it before. I mean, I was a fan first, you know, I, I just can't do it. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I love it too much. I love being I love being a fan and an audience member too much. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Like that's that's kind of an excitement. Like hey, that's that's what moves me. You know? So we talked a little bit about what's next for Tiny Pyramids. What's next overall for you? You know, you're you're. I know you're doing another short film, and I imagine there might be more of that in the in the future. But even like, yeah, like if I looked, I I'm not going to ask you like, what are you going to do in five years? But you know, like, yeah, what are the big things that you're hoping to do? Um, you know, in the future, just not stop. And yeah, I mean, I would love to, you know, we got, um, I think that we're close to being, I think that my crew, like my filmmaking crew, uh, I think we're close to, you know, having something that could be on the level of a, of a, of a Sundance short pretty soon. Um, so, you know, I, I think within five years we could easily be at Sundance with a short film. Um, which would be awesome. Uh, I mean, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, but you know, um, I think we're finally getting to that level where we're, 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 yeah, we're just about ready to, to turn in some, some work that's hopefully on that kind of level. Um, and that would be amazing, you know, uh, to do something like that and keep going and, and start playing, you know, the bigger festivals like the South by Southwest and the, the Tribeca's or the Tillyrides or, you know, um, um, Sundance and, and that kind of thing. Um, that would be like the goal. I love that. That's a goal. I mean, that's definitely awesome. My favorite answer out of all that was to not stop though. Like, like yeah. I mean, I Sundance, obviously like that's so good, but yeah, I know that that's the thing is, you know, too many people just stop and it's not in, in, you know, regardless of whether you're good or not, they just stop. They yeah. give up. They, they, you know, and that's just one thing that I don't want to do. And that's hard not to give up. I mean, I I live in and breathe in that right now, even just with the work I'm doing. And I think, like the self doubt thing you talked about, like, oh yeah, <laughs> I live with that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if you don't stop, then you've kind of beat the self self doubt. Yeah, you do. Even if it's not, you know, I, I'll never beat the self doubt that's in my own head that's constantly telling me that you know what I just made sucks and is not good enough but by but you're right by not stopping though I somehow am beating it yeah you are I mean you're still you're still there so you know I always like to end these with just one or two questions about specific advice for others just thinking and I think this is so this would be really important from you because you really are doing things on your own. I mean, you know, obviously you have partners and people around you that are collaborating or whatever, but you're building something and, you know, like we talked about, it's not in Los Angeles, not a major city like that. What advice would you give to somebody who wants to break into maybe film or music that hasn't done it yet, hasn't started? Um, well, it's a good time to do it uh, in terms of, you know, I know some young, I have a couple interns and who want to be filmmakers. And I mean, it's an amazing time in terms of, um, resources and equipment and everything is so cheap and accessible now. And, it, and, it, and, and usually, um, you know, foster good results, uh, in terms of like 
technique and technical aspect. So, you know, that's encouraging. Um, but uh, you know, advice, I, I guess I would say, I mean, I could get really specific and say like, you know, advice for filmmaking, advice for music making, advice for acting. Um, but, um, I think, I think that the first thing I tell them is, is good, you know, go for it. <laughs> like, absolutely do it. Like, don't even second guess it. Don't even, you know, um, and also I would say, you know, one thing I had trouble with for a long time was calling myself a filmmaker and calling myself even an artist. And I would say, um, I would say, don't, don't let, you know, right away when you decide to be a filmmaker, say you're a filmmaker, say you're an artist, you know, don't, because that, that, that works on your psyche. You know what I mean? It's a, it can help you, um, that you just decide I'm going to be this. I, I am this, I'm going to do this. I, 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 I am what I want to be. Um, I, I would say get in that mindset. That's actually so smart. I, I, I didn't think of it that way. That's actually really a smart thing. You're right. I mean, that kind of probably helps with the self doubt as well. Like you're doing it. You don't need yeah. permission or you don't need a certain something to say it. No, you don't. And, you know, I struggle with, you know, I, cause I used to tell myself, well, you're, you, you know, let someone else tell me that I'm a filmmaker. Let someone else tell me I'm an artist because they are the audience and they, you know, if, if they feel like my work is good enough, they'll, they'll, they'll refer to me as such. And it's like, the, sure, there's something to that. And, but that's, that's that self doubt though. That's that, that's that me saying, you know, I don't feel comfortable enough. I don't feel I'm good enough. And oftentimes I don't, and I, and I, I struggle with that and battle with that. But, um, but I think for young, younger people who are like, and, and, and I think a lot of them are, I think a lot of them are just like, I'm a filmmaker, you know? And that's like, that's amazing. It's, it's awesome. And, and I encourage it. I, you know, I would just say, and also I would say, don't, don't give up, you know, like what we just talked about. Um, because it is easy. It is easy to just sort of be like, Oh my God, that's so much work. And look at this first thing I made. It's really bad. Um, you know, <laughs> oh, we all have I think, that. I think I'm just not gonna, you know, I'm sure you've read that quote. I'm reminded of that. Um, the Ira Glass quote, you know, um, where he's like, you know, he talks about basically, I'll just surmise it real quick. It's like a paraphrase, but you know, he's basically saying you, you, your, your taste is good, but your skills are, are, are shit at first. You know? <laughs> uh, but eventually if you don't give up and you keep making it, making it, your, your, your skills will, uh, reach the level of your taste. Yep. I know that yeah. quote. It's actually a really long quote. So I it's think really it's really long. It's really yeah. long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that was a, that was a poor. <laughs> like yeah, but, description. but you but. got to the gist of it. It, it is really, it's really true. Like everybody sucks in the beginning because your skills suck. Right. You, you, you don't know how to do anything. And that's, and that's what we all have to, you know, push through and, 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 and you never really do push through it a hundred percent. I don't think, I mean, I, like I said, I mean, hopefully we're, you know, we're almost at like, short film Sundance level. Okay, great. So if that's like in five years, um, I mean, we're still learning them, you know, I mean, we're still, I learn every single time I go out and turn on a camera. Yeah, absolutely. I, it does make a lot of sense. I agree. I mean, I don't think we'll ever, it will never get to like the, Oh, I can totally breathe now, but we'll get to a better spot probably. Yeah. I think you'll have yeah peaks and valleys and, 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 uh, you know, I also think that I, I don't know. I think if you're an artist or a creative and you say, Oh, I, I mastered that or I'm, I'm, I'm done with that. Then you're, you, you know, you're not really one anymore. Like you, 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 I mean, why, why, you know, Bob Dylan was is still making records. Uh, Leonard Cohen was making records. He came out with one last year, right before he died. You know, we, they don't, I don't think these guys, I mean, obviously these guys are masters, <laughs> but I think that they just can't stop. Even if they wanted to stop, they yeah. couldn't do it. Well, Jared, this has been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed talking through it all. I think it's super, I mean, it's great work that you're doing too, but you actually have a lot of, I think, real life experience and wisdom because it's, you're actually doing it. So thank you. Well, I thank you so much. I, I, I'd love to hear more about your story sometime. Absolutely. Well, but as we end this too, I always like to ask, because um, I think there's multiple places to find you, but where should people go online to see your different work? That's a great question. I, I wish I had, um, uh, probably my Vimeo page is the, is the best right now. Uh, you can always go to the video bright media site, which will have 
some of our music videos, uh, but mostly corporate work, um, which, you know, is, 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 is beautiful, but it's not, it's not a creative, so to speak outlet. So, um, but videobright.com or, uh, my Vimeo page, uh, you can just look up Jared and Wright. Um, and what about tiny pyramids? Tiny pyramids. You can go to our Facebook is probably the best. Um, you can also look up me on Facebook, but yeah, tiny pyramids. If you want to listen to it for free, you can go on SoundCloud and look up tiny pyramids. Um, but our EP is available on Spotify and iTunes if you like to do that. Perfect. And I'll list every link also in our show notes. Um, if people just want to look there and on the website. Awesome. This is awesome. Well, again, I appreciate it so much, Jared. So great to talk to you. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for listening to the show this week. What'd you think? Great story? Any new ideas? If you're new to the show, subscribe to receive a new episode each week automatically. And if you love the show and you want to help us out, go tell a friend about it. Then go write us a quick review on iTunes. Both of these favors really help us get the word out. If you want to follow along with me and see behind the scenes fun and more, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at me Christopher. That's M E C H R I S T O P H E R. To get even more inspiration and updates, follow Accidental Information on Instagram and Facebook at Accidental Information and on Twitter at Accidental Info. We also post original articles about following your passions and getting creative and more information about each episode at accidentalinformation.com. Thanks for joining me this week. Now let's keep chatting online, and then I will talk to you again next week.